Okay, this is a side-by-side -side review of a uh, Spyderco Valatin subhilt. You know, the Italian-inspired uh, Spyderco stiletto kind of gadget. Uh, this is going to be factory versus uh, Chinese knockoff. So the uh, Chinese knockoff is on the right here. That's on the bottom right now. So... Um, I'm going to spend a little time on these boxes, as little time as possible, just noticing whatever on the box. I'm not going to go into tea leaves too much on it, but uh, like a lot of them, you'll notice that the barcode runs right up against the Arabic numerals on the reel, and they leave this space here on the fix. They just continue to do that. That's one of the ways you can usually tell. I haven't really... There may be some fakes out there that get the barcode where it runs right down on top of the numerals, but usually they don't. Um, the rest of the box, um, the real one is on the left. You know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over those kind of things. Uh, as far as the colors and the, you know, it's just, uh, to me it's, it's ridiculous because, like I said before, all the boxes, either fakes or reels, are printed in China. So, okay, so let's unbox them here. Here is the real one. It's in a bubbly wrap. And the fake is on the top, and this is a common way for them to package these knives. Sometimes it's even worse than this, this thin stuff. Um, this knife was about $25, I think. So when we get done, it, it's, I'm going to tell you, it is a really awesome knife for, this is the fake, for $25. Bucks. So that's with shipping from all the way across the world, 12 hours away, uh, time zones. Um, here's the real one. It's in the typical Spyderco, uh, you know, bubble wrap, fitted sleeve, which is pretty nice. Uh, you know, it works, and it's it's a. Sometimes the Chinese will ship it in a fitted sleeve, but the fitted sleeve is the, the bubbles aren't uh, lined up like this, and it's just thin and it looks dirty, and so. But this is a typical Spyderco fitted sleeve thing. Uh, it's got the you know little uh, piece of paper in it uh, that they always put the education thing. I don't usually go over that looking for a lot of typos and stuff. I don't really pay attention to them. So here's the uh, crinkly wrap. If Spyderco sometimes puts them in this in this uh, sleeve like this, but if it is, it's not going to have all these crinkles in it. It's going to be perfectly flat on both sides and clear. It's going to have this is thin, almost like what you used to get, you know, cigarette, uh, you know, twenty pack of cigarettes in. Uh, it's thin and crinkly, and that's this is a Chinese sign right here. I've never seen Spyderco use anything like they use something like this, but it's very well fitted and it lays flat and it's clear and it doesn't look like this. So we'll pull that knife out and we'll pull. I'm not like I said. I'm not going to compare the education things. Uh, the only thing I really do pay attention to, and this has the characteristics of Chinese versus real. So the Chinese is on the top and the real one is on the bottom. And what you can usually tell is that two things you look at for the foam. Is the foam thin and flimsy? And can you see through it? And does it fit the bottom of the box? So if you look at the real one on the bottom, you see the space here. The real foam on a real Spyderco never fits the box. And it doesn't matter whether it's a little box or a bigger box or this big box. There's always a space here where you can see the bottom. The Chinese, they've corrected that flaw. <laughs> Theirs fit perfectly. If anything, they're usually a little over big. Now, so when you pull it out, the other thing that usually about the Chinese foam is that you can usually see through it. So there you can see, and it's not a very bright day here, but uh, this is actually maybe thicker than some of it. But if you look, you can see that white space through there. It's thinner foam. When you, when you pull out the Spyderco foam, turn it up, you're not going to see through it. It is a much denser foam, has a total different feel. So you can't see through it and it doesn't fit the bottom. Those are characteristics of real versus fake. That's all I'm going to say on boxes. Now these knives right here, this is probably the biggest difference I've seen as far as how they put these knives together on a clone versus a real knife. The clone is on the top and the Reel is on the bottom. Um, they've got, for some reason, they put the clip on the wrong side on the clone. I don't know why they did that. But, um, you know, this is a stainless steel and a um, Micarta, black Micarta um, scales. 
and they uh, and they did the same thing on the. You can see obviously a finish difference, which we're going to go on. You can see they did the same thing on the fake. Um, let me start off with some some weights, and then I usually don't use a caliper, but I am on this because there's such big differences in uh, how they did the um, the manufacturing of these two knives. So the real one weighs 180 grams. And that's six and can't see it three eighths of an ounce. The fake is 194 grams. You know, about half a gram, about half an ounce more, about 15 grams more, 180, 195, and uh, it's six and seven eighths. So there's a little bit of difference in the uh, weight on the two knives. Um, there's a huge difference. Usually Spyderco is very good about getting the dimensions of the knives correct. If you get a clone, and especially some of the better clones, and clones, when I say better, I mean that they, you had to pay 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 dollars more maybe, but you know, in the, definitely when you get up in the 20 something dollar range, they make really well knocked off clones. They're, you know, millimeter for millimeter, they're, I, for all practical purposes, identical. They're very close in weights and everything's almost the same. This is the only knife I've seen that is there's huge dimensional differences in these knives. So if you look at the bottom of this knife, you can see and that everything about it, the angle, not only just the angle that the bottom is cut, but you can see the width of it, the length, it is a huge difference. I don't have very good light today, so. So here's the top and the real one's on the left. Now this is a big beefy knife. You can see, so the real real one. So this one makes it even bigger and beefier. This uh, having all these things off, you can see uh, how much difference there is in the bolsters. I mean, it's a huge amount. Um, there's obviously a finish in the micarta difference. The micarta on the real one is really really well done. I mean, it is just it's mirror finished and it is well done. It's beautiful. I mean for Micarta it's just really nice. It's not really super functional but because uh, it's you know this is kind of a slippery knife but with that like this. Here's the finish on the Micarta on the clone here. And they left it you know and there's some machining marks, sanding type marks. You can see up at the top here and it's just left as a satiny finish. Of course, you could finish this off, and it would be nice. The clips are very similar. I don't know why they mounted this on the wrong side, and I didn't. I didn't want to change it because that's the way it came right now. So I'm not going to move it around. You can see there's the clips are very similar. The one on the fake on the right is a little smaller. You can see that the fake has got a ferrule, and there's not one on here. And there you can see uh, hopefully the difference in how big these things are. And I'm going to tell you, this knife is big enough. You don't need it. It feels good in your hand for being so big, but you don't want to, it's not one you really want to get a lot bigger, like this thing. This thing feels very chunky. This thing, as big as it is, feels good and is, you know, very svelte for what it is. It does have a, if you look at the handle, it does have kind of a Italian-inspired kind of stiletto kind of look and feel to it. And it's got a nice flare at the bolster, and it's got a little flare down here, so... It feels good in your hand. This knife really does. So it's a very polished knife and it deploys super fast, I think, because of the geometry between this hole and this pivot and how it's just perfectly set up to be lightning fast. Even though this knife out of the box and it is still very stiff, it just flips like crazy. So if it was looser and more broke in, it would be awesome. And all these fit and finish on these things is, are pretty good if you feel the, the difference between the micarta and the stainless how it fits along here. Very nice. Um, so I guess what I'll do is I'll get out my caliper here. I'm going to do this in millimeters. And I'll do some comparisons maybe of some differences here. Let me see. I'm nine minutes into this. I want to move along here. So uh, on the end here, so we get 16.65 is like the widest end here.
and we get 14 and a quarter. It's actually narrower, and that's part of the styling of this end, is they really did, if you look at how Spyderco did the styling on this end of this knife, they did some sort of complex, you can see it kind of flares out at the end, it gets wider on the end, and then it has a wedgy shape, you know, front to back, and then on this very tip, you can see kind of a complex move they made on where these two lines at the top meet. They've laid it down a little bit. And this is styling, and also the way it feels in your hand is really nice. They haven't done that on here. So they did a little bit of this, you know, they kind of tried to capture some of the idea. They did make a little bit of a wedging from the front to the back on there. I'm not focusing where the crap today because the light is weak. And then on the end here, they did try to do some of that, but not to the same extent. So what you got is actually this end is a little skinnier in thickness and everything. Um, but if you look at these areas, like, so let's look at the belly here, how wide it is on this particular knife. And I'm just going to measure this micarta. So it's 21.25 across this area right here. And on this guy... Hmm, must have got something wrong. This one's 23.8. Must have read that wrong. The glare out here is going to get me messing around. 27.20. To 23. Five millimeters, four millimeters difference. Four millimeters, you know, a sixth of an inch. So um, that's a big difference. Uh, I'll measure across this bolster area just for fun here. So on the real one, it's 29.70 across this front of this bolster. This is a huge amount here. 33.80. So almost about four millimeters of difference. Four millimeters of difference. That's, uh, you know, a sixth of an inch. So uh, that's how much wider this is. All the dimensions on this knife are kind of carried that way. It's uh, the only thing it might be a little thinner. Let me measure the actual thickness of the handle right here because actually this, the, the side to side thickness seems like it's a little smaller. So across this silver thing is 15 millimeters wide. Right there, 15.2. I got a feeling the real one's a little thicker across here. Yeah, it's 17.1, 17.1. So it's two millimeters thicker. So when you pick this one up, it feels thicker side to side than this one does. It's thinner, but all then all these other dimensions are way off, and they're way off. Uh, the blade is kind of about the same. The fit and finish of the knife, this is a kind of a, it moves very smooth, but it's kind of a thick motion. It's not been broken in or anything at all. This one is very similar. Um, with the exception of when it goes down, it, sound, it feels like it's bouncing against uh, a plastic or something in there. So I've looked, and the only place it looks like it closes back on is on this pin. So um, when the knife closes, the back of the tang rests against this stop pin. And I think it's the angle that this thing is cut, because this is where this thing, this thing right here, actually, there's a pin mark right there. Come on, focus. Yeah, you can see where that pin mark is making. Let's see if it's on this one. And I don't see the mark on this one. And I got a feeling that's why somehow this thing is really, when it goes down, you can't do, it's, it's tight here. But when this one is closed, You see that? That just kind of, it's a little spongy there. Um, lock up, fore and back, side to side, solid as a rock. Um, the um, other little niggling thing is these, um, these guys, these countersunk screws, they're not really countersunk, they're sticking up above the surface. You feel them when you run your finger across. Um, when, you feel, when you grab hold of Spyderco, 
and you run the finger across, these are perfectly countersunk. You can't feel the screws sticking up. If you just run your thumbnail across there, it goes across smooth. So uh, one of the things that uh, other people have noticed, and I really wish they wouldn't do this, I wish they'd just pick, like, you know, tip up, tip down, and not drill a zillion holes in. Because this knife, if it, as far as I'm concerned, they can leave this clip the way it is and take out all those other, those other three sets of three holes. It would look a not nicer knife. They're trying to accommodate everybody, and they kind of screw up the looks of the knife. Uh, the blades are very similarly ground as far as just looking at them. Of course, metallurgically wise, you don't know what this is, what the, uh, the fake is. But uh, it's a similar thing. The uh, little grind down area here at the tip is not quite as uh, accentuated on the, um, on the fake. This video is in 4K, by the way. If you have a 4K setup, you can look at it in a lot of high detail. You can see the logo there. I don't forget who makes this. Uh, this is a you know kind of a special version, and uh, I forget the designer's name. But there's his logo. This is very sharp too. The Spyderco is extremely sharp. The uh, knockoff is pretty sharp too. Most of the knockoffs they get pretty sharp. So you can see. If you'll be able to appreciate it here. I hope I don't cut myself. You can see it's not quite as prominent, this fakes on the top. It's not quite that little grind down tip to make a little thinner tip. It's not quite as, they did it, they made an effort, but that's about it on the fake. The finish on the fake though on the blade is very good. Fakes on the bottom now. And they got the, you can see the uh, logo they got there. It's very similar, fakes on the bottom. The blade thicknesses are about the same. I'm not going to caliper those things. You can see that the real ones on the left, the jimping is, is a little bit different. I think this knife, because they in this tang area, top and bottom, they leave it very smooth. I think the jimping on this knife, if you're going to use it for anything, especially if you were trying to protect yourself with it, that actually the fake jimping is better because... Uh, oh, come on now. is because it's deeper and a little more substantial. So when you get your finger in here and you know you got such a slick knife, this is one of the things that's keeping you from sliding up and taking the tendons off your fingers on the bottom. So uh, I would say that I kind of prefer this jimping to the Spyderco. Spyderco is like all the other Spydercos. The finish on this knife is very good except for um, it's a mystery to me why they didn't finish the micarta. You can see some machining marks, obviously, side to side on that stainless. Let's see how well it's, I think you're going to see it's finished a little nicer on Mr. Spyderco here, and it is. You know, it's, they spent some more effort on that. This is an exceptional knife. The other big thing is when you're holding it, two more things. Um, you're holding it in your hand. A lot, uh, people have complained about the way this lock is set up on the uh, real, real deal here. So it is a little bit, uh, you know, it is a little strange how they did this. But when you're holding it in your hand, especially where it falls across the middle of this second digit, you don't, and the whole knife is so smooth, it doesn't really bother you. You don't really feel it. So this is more of a, you know, a kind of a people cosmetically kind of dissing the knife a little bit as opposed to a functional issue because when you put it in your hands you don't really notice it at all. It's not egregious. It's this little point and the reason, one of the reasons why it's not a problem is that that little point there on the end of the lock release is, is it's not sticking up real high and they've rounded the end of it off. Now here on this guy this whole lock area release sticks out much further you can see and it's much more substantial and bigger. So that when you grab this one, you're feeling a little more. It's not terrible, but you just you definitely have a, a feeling of where this point is right here. And then I guess one of the last things I'm going to point out on this knife is that um, is that when you run your finger on the inside, how they finish the stainless steel on the inside of these uh, pieces of stainless, is they've rolled the edge. 
And I don't know if you'll be able to appreciate it if we can catch the edge, if you'll see how much it reflects on the edge, that shows you the amount of roll kind of it is. So it's smoothed off there. It's still 90 degrees, but it's they've you know, sort of chamfered the edge off a little bit. So all these edges, when your hand is in there and it comes in on all these edges, it's not like a razor that you'd, even, that you'd worry about cutting yourself on at all. And, and then it just feels smooth and finished. Now this guy, and I've got a Falcon Evan, which is worse than this one. But it is, uh, and they did that one on purpose. They actually want to make it sharp, I think, on the inside. This, is, this edge is broke over pretty with very little camphor on it. And I mean, it's, you can hear my finger catching on it. It's kind of sharp. All these edges here. All these edges are very, so when you grab it, you feel all those edges. Whereas on the uh, real Spyderco, you pick this up, you don't really notice those edges because they're all smoothed over. The knife itself is a little bit f uh, stiffer out of the box, but it still flips open super easy. Uh, I would say this is an awesome knife for the amount of money they're asking for because you're talking eight, nine, ten times difference in pricing uh, between these two knives. So if you're amenable to carrying clones and uh, you, you don't want to, you don't mind carrying a Spyderco knockoff, uh, this is a pretty good deal. Um, it's very substantial piece of steel. I don't know what it's made out of. I think it, they probably claim something like D2 on this on using a lot of their knives and they have access to D2. This is probably a D2 knife, but this is a pretty decent knife for the money. Um, I like real Spydercos. I just happen to, I just get these guys to, um, to review them and then move them on someplace. They move on, but, uh, cause I don't keep them, but, um, but this is a lot of difference in money. This is obviously a more polished and more, um, finished off product. So um, I think that's about all I want to cover on these knives. Uh, if you have any questions or any comments, uh, feel free to leave them, and I'll try to respond as quick as possible. I usually get to those pretty fast. And uh, I'm interested to hear what you have to say about this. Uh, if you have a 4K monitor, you can watch this in 4K. If you uh, do, I'd like to hear what you have to say about how, how the 4K comes out. And uh, thank you for watching.